Plus, I've kept it like each 30 minutes long and all about his side. The peak, pull the places and the borough pride. Did you know that I can't sweat? That's because I was in a war. And if I tried, then my armpits would get quite sore. La, 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 la. Oh, sorry, there, that is. Uh, just singing my new hit song about not being able to sweat. Uh, there. Welcome to uh, TED Talks, the TED Anki podcast, episode 22, where uh, it's proper class and that, you know what I mean? Uh, I can't believe we got this far. People are still listening to it, so thanks. Uh, people are wanting to be guests on it, so thanks. Uh, and people are contributing and sharing it and that, so thanks again, uh, you daft buggers. <laughs> but no, I do appreciate it, I really do. Uh, so uh, we've got another another action-packed-filled uh, show today. Uh, probably not going to be as long as last week's, but it'll be just as effective. So please enjoy it. And uh, I'm just going to quickly nip off now and uh, give me armpits a little a little wipe and put on some Lynx Java because uh, unlike certain people, I do sweat like a bastard. <laughs> And as always, the show is sponsored by Butterfan TV and Showcase Comedy. Butterfan TV providing fan content on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and YouTube. Uh, and Showcase Comedy uh, providing fantastic comedy nights in, in Yorkshire and uh, in the North East, like Teesside area and that. So check them out on Facebook and all that. Uh, you'll enjoy it. So, uh Right then, ladies and gentlemen. So, in the podcast studio with me uh, right now is uh, is musical comedian Eddie Hirsch. Now, Eddie, you all right? Yeah, um, hello. I should have. I probably should have sang that. Shouldn't that would have been a nice little sing it? Go on, yeah, sing right. it for us. Go on. Hello. Oh, hold, hold on. Hang on. Let me. Uh, hello. No, I messed. You know what? I've, I'm so sorry, Ted. You've invited me on, and I've I've just brought lots of self doubt. Uh, but it's great to be here. Uh, you know, it's often that's all people can. That's my guarantee. I'll bring self doubt. Yeah, I bet Lionel Richie shit himself with that little bit there as well. He was very <laughs> nervous. He's always been. I mean, you know, I like you know Ted. I've toured with Richie a few times, uh, and he always gets very nervous when he hears that chord because he knows. Yeah, he knows he's going to say hello. <laughs> It gets nervous with me when I start doing pottery as well. Yeah, Because so, uh, um, I'm good at it, that's why. Uh, yeah, first yeah, yeah. question I'm going to ask you, Eddie, is I ask all my guests on the studio, what, what have you had for your tea tonight? Uh, you know what? Like, I've not had tea yet. Um, <gasps> this oh. is the first time on TED Talks. Nobody's <laughs> ever come on on an empty stomach. I know. I could go feral at any point. I could go off the handle, just as a warning. Uh, I'm not known to get hangry, but I'm, I might. Um, we, I've got a plan to have fajitas, though. So, you know, if all goes right. well, um, I'm going to treat myself. Do you, do, you, do you roll your own fajitas or do you yeah, have someone who rolls them for you? No, I like a, I like a rolly fajita. Uh, I like doing it yourself. You know, you feel like a, you feel a real room. I do quite like, um, I like food that you have to do a bit of, your, not all of it, but a bit of it. Do you know what I mean? Like you get given all of the bits that are all prepped with a fajita, but you have to put them together. Like I like, I quite like that. I, I agree. Like I had uh, spaghetti hoops on toast, and uh, I had to open the can. I sure. put it in a bowl, put a plate on top of the bowl, put it in the microwave, make some hot bread, and uh, or toast, I think it's called, and then eat it. Uh, and I made that myself, so I'm very proud. You should be proud. I mean, I do feel like you did a lot more legwork than 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 just popping it together though. There, I wouldn't sell yourself short, Ted. You did a real, you did a real thing there. Yeah, 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 and uh, and and I'm having a nice cup of tea now as well, which oh, is uh, bloody, settle down. Did you did you have did you how did how do you make that? Uh, talk um, me through talk me through your tea. Sorry, I know you're meant to be asking the questions, but I, I love I love hearing like I like I like finding out what people how people like to cook eggs. Now people make cups of tea. Right, so this is what I did. Right, I'm, okay. uh, I'm one of them. I'm one of them weird bastards who puts the milk in the cup first. 
Oh man, okay. Yeah, right. yeah. It's contentious, I know. I put the milk in the cup first, and then sure. I put half half a spoonful of sugar. I'm not talking. I'm not talking a big fucking spoon. I'm on sure, a yeah, little yeah. spoon. Uh, and then I put my tea pack in, yeah. and then um, I just uh, I then just fill it up with hot water from the tap. What from the tap? What do you What do you mean? What like just from you don't boil the water? Yeah, out the tap. Comes out the tap hot, doesn't it? Well, like you got no. Do you have one of the magic, the magic taps that you do the super boiling water, or is it just you're just leaving it to like hand washing hot? It's just and it's just hot water, isn't it? Like you know, you, you don't want a scalding hot cup of tea. The tap water is at the optimum temperature for a cup of tea, so it's perfect. <laughs> you're a brave man to 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 go public with this, mate. You're a brave man. I think I think well, if, if you know when the public hears this, there's going to be riots in the street, Ted. Well, uh, I, I did used to have a kettle, but um, it, it broke, and right. um, I put it outside for the scrap men to take it, uh, yeah, but yeah, they yeah. wouldn't take it because what? of the, the the waste electronic electrical uh, um, rules, and then I have to dispose of it through the wee ruling. So it's just it's been out in the in the garden for about three months now. It's got some weeds in it and stuff now. It's looks nice. It looks like, it, it looks yeah, like yeah. it could be in one of those uh, hipster pubs, you know, like hanging outside just yeah, a kettle yeah, full yeah, of yeah. plants. That's a good idea, actually. Yeah. I'd love that. That'd be a great cafe thing, wouldn't it? Like you've had, you know, you got them places with the sewing machines. You could just pop a few kettles with plants in them. Hey, I'm just, I'm just, hey, I'm going to, I'm going to paint them now. Yeah, 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 last, yeah. last week, me and Jack Liddell went through loads of ideas such as celebrity skid marks and, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, gloves for zombies and stuff like that. That's another good invention. That kettle, hey. kettle plants, that like, just for cafes. That's great, but it has to be exclusively for cafes. Don't let any, don't let any of them fuckers try and be like, oh. In, in my bathroom no it has to be in a cafe no. has to be in a cafe no I agree uh, service stations they're not having them um, no. I'm not even going to allow them in supermarket cafes because uh, they're ruining the high street yeah. so <laughs> independent independent cafes only yeah. a man's um, got to have a code Ted he's got to have a yeah. code <laughs> Definitely, definitely, mate. Hipster cafes, uh, ones ones that do like you know, like avocado in a shoe or something oh, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. You know, yes, you, please. You've got, to, you've got a higher rate of food poisoning at these places because sure. um, you know, you know, hipsters in general are, are a bit dirty um, when I look at them. So I'm assuming they've got dirty hands as <laughs> it's, well. It's more environmental, though, isn't it? You know, less less washing. It's it's good for the environment. Yeah, doing your yeah. bit. You know, taking on care. Oh, pot plants in it. That's it's good for the environment, man. They say reducing the carbon footprint, but does the smell from their smelly feet make their footprint more carbon? Uh, that's a fair point because like methane's a problem as well, isn't it? And so like yeah. if, if you smell more, you're making more meat. Oh god, I didn't need this. I'm going to have to have a yeah. wash now. I've been I've been six months, six months clean, unclean. Six, uh, six months, and you still can't grow that proper beard. No, as well. I'm, tra- I'm, I'm having a real slog at it, mate. <laughs> I'm trying my best. <laughs> Get yourself out to Palmore land. That's right, Stockton's new place for all things Palmore. Just off Stockton High Street, down one of them back alleys where them pubs are, where no one dare go. What type of Palmores do we do here, you ask? Well, listen up, and I'll go through the list. Chicken Palmore. Pork Palmore. Hot shot. Peas pudding Palmore. Palmore karma. Egg fried Palmore. Palmore wrapped in a Yorkshire pudding for your Sunday needs. Parmesan flan. And a Kit Kat Palmore for dessert. We've even got a low calorie Palmore for your fat knackers. Who love Palmores? So get yourself off to Palmore land this weekend for your Palmore. Your customers get a guaranteed shot of hepatitis C. Palmore land there, check it out, man. This song's proper mint, doesn't it? Um, I've heard a rumour that you are known as the wild man of comedy. Is this true? <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah, sure. No, why not? Yeah, no, I'll stick with that. Yeah. I'll watch, watch, watch like the maddest thing you've done. Go oh, on. Oh, uh, mate. Like one time I sat like, right, let me talk you through it. I was on a tram in Manchester. Uh, yeah. And... Um, I was standing up for a bit and then, uh, right, somebody, like we came to a stop and there were these two seats and there were two people on those seats, so one-to-one seats, and then one of them stood up and walked off the tram, spare seat. Whoa, daddy-o. Um, and I, I look at it and I look around and I see that there are a few other people standing up. Yeah and, yeah, and they're not like you know. It's not like anybody needs to seat more. It's not like a priority seat. There's nobody. There's no pregnant ladies or, or pe- people with disabilities or anybody who who looks like they could do with that seat more. And I just I didn't even ask anyone. I didn't like say out loud to the tram, "Hey, it's all right if I have this." I just I just did it. I sat <laughs> sat down all in one. You're mad. You're and, mad uh, bastard. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. I know. Uh, watch me smash some taboos, baby. That's my catchphrase. Wow. <laughs> What, like, shots of taboo? Oh. Well, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I can do that too. Uh, whatever. Any, you know, if there's... Ooh, I'll have a go. Well, yeah. Neat taboo. Yeah. Uh, taking yeah. over trams. Yeah. Okay, man, yeah. honestly, yeah. you like the, the Keith Richards of, of comedy. Uh, I've always, I've I've, always, people have always said that about me. Yeah, yeah I'm going to put that in your you put that on your posters. The Keith Richards yeah, comedy, be. proper mad. Uh, I suppose yeah. the maddest thing I've ever done was um, we we met Mala, Julie, big fat Julie's brother-in-law. He uh, he, de- he he dared me to uh, to eat a daddy long legs, and I did. Oh mate, uh, what was it? What did it taste yeah. like? Um, it was it was a bit wriggly, okay. um, and I couldn't I couldn't really taste that much because they're quite thin, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I did I did get one of its uh, one of its legs stuck in it stuck in my teeth, and I didn't realise. Oh, no. And uh, I went into uh, I went into Costa Coffee oh, uh, for the cappuccino, man. and I, I, there's a lovely lovely bit of flanger works behind the counter there, and I just gave a, a lovely a lovely smile like that, and I had a daddy long legs leg wiggling out my tooth, so. Uh, ruined it for me oh. that's amazing I mean the thing is though like if, if you'd gone to like a like a, a costa and it was a frog behind the till she'd have loved it oh right? she'd have been all she'd over been it like, oh, she? mate is that you brought that for me and just like long tongue right right on it would have been a treat just I'm it's just saying you should say that though Eddie it's funny you should say that because she, she is French so uh... oh, mate, it could have everything's lining up here you know yeah she a bit worse than her daddy's long legs anyway. Yeah, absolutely. Like a snail. Is that yeah. yeah. I don't know what my tone was there. But yeah. it's very <laughs> snail. <laughs> you, went, you, went, you went all snape on me there, didn't you? I know, you? I'm it's saying. That's, that's my mask, sorry, my mask was slipping. Let me uh, cover the darkness up again. <laughs> <laughs> hey, speaking of snails, though, I want yeah. you know them little tiny little snails. What you you find some? I don't know whether the baby snails or the oh, different yeah, breeds yeah, yeah. of snails. Yeah, I once smuggled one into a nightclub with me, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> this is true. This is true. And it was uh, I'd probably say it was in the mid two thousand, like two thousand and six, something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. And um, there was a girl who uh, who uh, I really liked. Uh, and I went up to her and I said, look, I, you know what? I really like you. How about me and you go out for like a date or something like that? And she went, I'm not sure. What's your name? I said, my name's Ted. She said, I've heard about you. You're a mucky bastard, aren't you? I said, yeah. She said, <laughs> right, well, what can you do? That's going to impress me. So I pulled this snail out of my pocket. Sure. Like that tiny little snail. And I said, I've got this snail. It's a love snail and I've got it for you. Aww. And, uh, and and she just told me to fuck off. Ah, oh, well, that's <laughs> so, oh, That's rude. That's really weird. Yeah, I just let it free. I just let it free in the nightclub. On it and it was like, I think I was just crawling about on the bar. And to be <laughs> honest, you know, it lasted a good five minutes before someone squished a pint on it. Ah, oh, no. I mean, but those yeah. five minutes, what a, what a journey. Because you know it would have been a wet surface as well. Like, do you remember yeah. that? Do you remember oh. that advert where they raced them snails? And it was like, was it, was it a Guinness advert? I think it was. It was something. It was. It was something like that. And yeah, they have them at the start, and they all go <laughs> right down it super quick. And I thought, like, yeah. you know, that must have been his life for about five minutes. He got to. Uh, he got to have that glory. Oh yeah, and the nightclub was full of flange as well. So we live out. We've got the big eyes on there, doesn't he? So we've yeah, been yeah, looking yeah. around at all the flange smashed uh, on on spilt cider. Oh, that's, that's a perfect way to go. Oh, perfect way to go. 
<laughs> oh, my uh, right, I'm, I'm just looking at some of your, your comedy achievements here, yes, apart from being the, the wild man of comedy. Sure, yeah. You've been, so you've been on BBC Radio 4 before. <laughs> yeah. What are you yeah. doing on that? I was, uh, well, I was nominated for the BBC New Comedy Award in 2017. And as part oh. of that, you go like into the into the heats of it. Um, and then they film you and they put your set on, on, on Radio 4. Um, so and, they're filming you, but they put it on radio. Yeah, actually, I'm not sure. Maybe they just recorded your voice. I think at the final they filmed people. Maybe they didn't right, film right. this bit. Although um, I did mine at Comedy Store in Manchester, and they have a camera for the stage, which um, they gave me the copy of. Very good. Not like a copy of the camera. I mean, that would have been and, great. Uh, that would have been. Yeah, oh. would have been lovely, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, what's that? It's so many handy cam. Cash converters. Uh, uh, so how did you get on? So you're in the final. How did you get on? Who won you? Who beat you? Oh, no. I, I, well, here's the th- I didn't get to the final. I just got nominated. Uh, but, oh, all right. All right. It's see, still good, though. Oh, still yeah. Good oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. It's, uh, it's absolutely, you know, for me, hey, it was a dream. Um, yeah, it's all right. Uh, it was great heat. Um, and, and I take solace in the fact that a lot of the people in that heat are far more successful than me now. So, you know, who's laughing? Um, uh, their audiences. Yeah, yeah. No, that's a good point. You've also got the final of the Great Yorkshire Fringe. Oh, and yeah, yeah. The, was it the Buddy Met as well? Yeah, yeah, the Met Berry. Um, I'm not quite... I, I mean, I, th- I, think, I think I'd probably be safe just to say it's Berry new comedian of the year or whatever but um all right yeah yeah but, you know what i think i'm in the final of that one oh yeah oh man so, yeah it's good it's good it's a nice room um it's a it's a it's a is it run by paul yes yes it yeah, is yeah yeah i am then yeah i am i am yeah, part of That's the urban right. comedy yeah. umbrella um i haven't done any heat or anything i'm just, no, no, you're just yeah you're just yeah. it's like a, a fish taken out of the ocean you just you just reeled right in and you you hit the deck and you flap around and you hope for the best um, to be honest mate that sounds like 70% of my set <laughs> well, <laughs> to be honest. I mean you seem you seem pretty prepped for it then pal yeah, I'll be good. I'll be good. Yeah, yeah, yeah I've yeah. got uh, I've got a pretty small following in Buddy, so that'll Perfect. be good. Uh, <laughs> what is it? What does that mean? Does that mean like an actual like a, a a small like small small people are following you, or like a small number of followers? What? You, what? Like a gaggle of? That's just a, maybe, is that I don't I I call them a gaggle. <laughs> I, I, I think the gaggles are your right bit of the, the phrase. I thought it, I thought you can use the dwarf word, but you can't use the M word. Oh, uh, I don't know. I mean, I guess it's individual to individual, isn't it? Um, li- I think right, I'll just, what I'll do is I'll just record that just in case. <laughs> I, don't you, I don't know whether you can use the D word or the M word, but the D word does still appear in pantomimes yeah, and sure. um, various stuff like that. So I think it's more acceptable. Yeah, sure. I think so. I mean, I'll, I'll, what I'll do is I'll remove that bit what you said about <laughs> yeah. uh, about the race of them there as well, Eddie. Oh yeah, sure. I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. If you can just edit out my whole uh, my Tolkien breakdown of uh, racial makeup, that'd be perfect. Thanks. <laughs> sure. Uh, so you one of these musical comedians? Yeah, that, uh, yeah. yeah. I know, listen, you like you like me. I'm I'm one of them sort of like I do I do a bit of prop comedy and something yeah, like that. Sure. You find you get frowned upon because you don't just stand in front of a microphone phone going what you call a man with a shovel on his head type of stuff I mean I do I, I find it get frowned upon but it's not normally for the um, musical comedy to be honest it's uh, normally my reprehensible behaviour as a wild man of comedy uh, yeah dress, dress sense as well yeah, yeah that yeah, too yeah. I mean I, look I didn't know it was meant to zip up it's not my fault I thought it was going to be a great <laughs> summer summer mate you kidding get yeah. a bit of down there you were certainly getting a draft down yeah, there. Yeah, that's indeed. right. Well, it's not a crime, except for yeah. the fact that it is a crime, it turns out. But, yeah. you know, and it we, was a school. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But we live, we learn, we laugh, and we don't go back to that PTA fundraiser. So, yeah. you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so, so you, you, you do some of this loop pedal stuff. Oh, What's yeah, loop yeah. pedaling? Yeah, oh, that? that's great. Uh, <laughs> I'd say it's great. I don't know. Like, I sort of worry a bit. Um, <laughs> 
uh, people like it. Um, I, I just it's it's one of these things. Like I like doing, I like mucking around with stuff that um, is a bit different, and I like doing stuff yeah. that's a bit different. Um, but then I think the thing with doing, uh, like like you said, with prop comedy, like it's it, you see less you see less prop comedy and you see less musical comedy than you do regular in quotation marks comedy um, yeah. and, I, and I think that like sometimes people think because it's not as common the reason the only reason somebody would ever want to do that is because it must be slightly easier you know what I mean like I think that's sometimes and um, so I, I this is a very long way of saying like I really like doing loop pedal stuff because I get to muck around a bit it's a little like it's a little machine box that you push a button it records your voice through the microphone and also like an instrument if you plug it in you press it again and it just plays it back so it plays it over and over again and you can like add new sounds on top of that so you can make make little songs um and I, i was like oh yeah this is really fun um but but then is it just another crutch so i don't have to write a joke yeah, it's good. It, it, it's, it's good. It's unique. I mean, I think uh, I think uh, Julie's got a, a bit of a built-in loop pedal. Oh, just, just keep going on and on and on about the same <laughs> shit. Certainly, when I'm trying to watch my favourite film or something like yeah, that, mate, that's it not. Just on. doesn't shut up, man. You know, I have to give her like three curly whirlies or something to shut her up. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, but they don't last long. Um, <laughs> have you seen so, the uh, Have you seen the little curly whirlies in the back? Like the what are they called? Like whirlers or something. You're like a little share. Oh, bag. well, they're like just like someone's took a few curly whirlies and cut them up with scissors. Yeah, yeah, it's like if knickknacks were chocolate. That's what it looks like. I think they're for people who can't figure out how to uh, bite a curly whirly. Yeah, that's me. That's me. I've uh, for years, uh, years I was traumatized by the world. Um, and finally, there was a friendly version for me. I was uh, it's best day of my life. Good, good. Uh, and where, what's your position on Freddos and Chomps? Are you a fan of them? Yeah, they're all right, you know. Um, yeah. I, I sort of, I used to like more than a Freddo, a Tazo. Do you remember Tazo? Oh, a Tazo, yeah. Was that, yeah. that was a Tasmanian devil with caramel yeah, yeah, inside, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, I think they're just caramel Freddos now, but I did like I did like the Tazo because I, I liked the synergy, you know, a big fan of the synergy. Uh, and I really thought it brought a lot to the table there. Yeah, I um, miss them. I yeah. wish them. But the police officer, the police officer you're in the background there, mate. Uh, not after me this time. Uh, they've gone past. Uh, so either, oh, either the sat nav's acting up and they're going to do a UE. Um, but we've probably got a few more minutes anyway. That's all right. We'll plough through. We'll plough yeah. through, mate. Uh, before they get, yeah. We could, though. We could, like, if they bust in and just nick you live on air. Like, you know what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mr. Yeah. Hurst, get on the floor for producing wild man <laughs> comedy stuff. You still owe us for that 14 inch Alba TV in that hotel you stayed in that you left and nicked the remote from. Yeah, I took the batteries out, too. They're gone. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck with that. I brought, you borrowed the batteries. But I did return yeah. them the next day. Yeah, that's fair. I posted wow, them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, I can see where you get this reputation from. I know. Now. It's, it's once you start. It's like a role. You know, you get labelled with something, and then all of a sudden, like you can't tell whether it's your your doing it deliberately or whether you were always like that. Yeah. I've I've always been a bit of an head case, me like you know. <laughs> I uh, I remember when I was I was fifteen and I used to do I used to play uh, garden hopping. Do you ever you go garden hopping, no. hedge jumping? Oh yeah 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 yeah. We call it garden hopping or you know, okay. hedge jumping. Yeah. And I, I always remember uh, that I, I jumped over this this one um, this one hedge yeah. and I didn't see and I fell into a pond full of koi carp no. um, and 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 I nicked two with the carps I put two carps in my pocket oh right right, right yeah and took them home and put them in my dad's pond nice, uh, nice. and my dad didn't notice for about a month he thought uh, a couple of his, his smaller carps had just ballooned in size <laughs> so uh, I, I didn't tell him until about 15 years later that seems that's uh, a decent thing to do mate like yeah it still grounded me then though <sighs> unbelievable how long were you grounded for Two weeks, no pocket money, wow. uh, no PlayStation. No, 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 28. I was very angry. <laughs> Uh, have you have you got your guitar with you? I do have that, you can, yeah. uh, I mean, I don't want you to do a divulge all of your fantastic material on the podcast, but uh, 
you might be able to share something to entice us to follow you on Facebook, Twitter, oh, yeah, and Instagram. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why not? Um, I tell you, I'll. Uh, oh, I could do a short. I tell, would you like a short song? I mean, I'm going to do a short song anyway. I don't know why I'm giving you the option. All my songs are you know, less than two minutes. So to say, I don't, I don't think we're ready for an anthem. No, no well, I'll, I'll uh, just scrumple up this prog rock. Sorry, All right, lads, you can go. Sorry, I just got to get the orchestra to pack up, Ted. Guys, you can go. <laughs> we don't need you. Don't need you. I don't know. I, just, I can't. I don't choose it. I make the choices. All right. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll have you. Okay. The, there wasn't anyone there. I just wanted to seem like a big shot. Oh, yeah, that's so, right. I, mean, I, mean, I know people have said that about me. <laughs> They've had them. That's what they are. You've had me. Yeah, I don't really like that now. I, I, I wonder too, if I can't get a fucking gig anywhere. <laughs> I, I, I riffed too far, Ted. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, here we go. Are you ready? Yeah. Uh, this is this is a love song. Uh, when I close my eyes, it's your face that shines through. God, I regret these eyelid tattoos. So there, that's a really, that's a really important like one. Thanks, mate. Straight from the heart, that one. Oh, actually, here's one I wrote. Um, I'm really, I'm really proud of this one because uh, I've been trying to get into blues for ages. Uh, like you know, the genre of blues because I think there's something, something really upbeat about it. Um, yeah. really, you know, it's bouncy in it, um, and I just think like you know, listening to the blues, you can never not be happy. Um, and I've actually written my my, my, my first ever foray into that. So this uh, this song's called. Uh, it's called How I Started My Day. Woke up this morning. So that's that one. Ted, yeah. see you there? That's, yeah. That's good. Yeah, yeah, I get that one. Yeah. Yeah. I've done really I, I almost want to work. I almost want to complete it for you, to be honest, because uh, I've got uh, I, I love that one where it's dun 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 dun. Yeah, all right. Oh, Enjoy oh, it. It. Come on, let's do one. Let's riff one. All let's right. riff one. Come on. All right. Woke up this morning. Went for a dump. It was a big one. Turned out to be a pump. <laughs> I ate a pump from school. Get out of PE. And it came out the back of root, baby. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There you go. Oh, yeah, you go. we're on it there. We're on it. Yeah, yeah. Chuck a baby. I think baby, the reason it's so popular in music is because it's an E, it's an e syllable, syllable end, which is quite, you know, there's loads of words that end in E. Um, uh, um, um, no, not that one. Uh, um, like this, decide ends in an E. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, party. No, that doesn't. No, oh God. Um, uh, um, made. Made. That, I mean, that's a silent. It, the E's silent on that. Um, oh God. Tube. Tube's an E. That works. Yeah. Um, Flange. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're right. You're right. 100%. Yeah. Right. That's that's an A. Yeah. yeah good. Um, uh, a flute. Wait, wait. A flute, yeah. Are we just going through loads of words that end in E at the minute? It, like, cer- it, it certainly seems like it. But, you know, it, <laughs> my, my motto is we're all going to die anyway. So, uh, why, why yeah. not? <laughs> <laughs> that, that die ends in an E, yeah. Oh, yeah, mate. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, both of them as well. Like, die as in wool die or die as in yeah. death. The final. La- la- the final. Lady die. Lady, Lady die. die. She didn't end in an E, though, did she? No, she no. <laughs> no, I'm not going to finish that joke. <laughs> But uh, I've just Googled it was an E-class vehicle. Yeah. Oh, was uh, it? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not too soon for that, is it? It's not too soon no, for that. I don't think it's too yeah. soon. I think, I think there's, enough, there's enough controversy with the royal family at the moment that that's probably well, still pickings. I was going to ask you, with you being the uh, the, the 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 wild man of comedy, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, do, do, do you sweat? 
Uh, I have, yeah. You know what? I am, I am a sweaty man. I often sweat. Oh, uh, right. I, I often, I get. It's actually, I'm allergic to Italian food. It does bring me out in a real. Uh, it makes me perspire quite a bit. So, I'd have had a, I'd have had a nightmare uh, if I'd gone down to Pizza Express. I'd have been sweating like no one's business. Oh, right. I mean, I didn't know whether you'd had some type of freak comedy experience that stops you sweating, you know, like, no. I don't know, some, some, someone someone threw a sausage roll at you and you're like, oh, I can't sweat anymore! <laughs> It's, I mean, it's happened. It's happened to many, hasn't it? That was. Do you remember that was that there was that year where um, there was the pastry heckler was, uh, and he went around chucking, chucking like everything from. He got. He went to barn cakes towards the end, and it was very uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, yeah. That was. You, you. You knew that at that point when he'd run out of the puff and the short and the the what is it? Short crust. Yeah, the short crust. Short, short, short crust. Top crust. Short crust. Uh, yeah. He had them all, it, and then he yeah, fell he, so he threw, low. He threw a bit he threw a beef slice at me mate did, um, did you do you do what did you do did you duck did you get out of the way did you just take it to uh, I, I just I just picked it up and ate it, to you be honest. Fair, fair. To be I, fair. I thought it was a chip. <laughs> that is, uh, that, I'd take that as payment for, 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 for many a gig. You know what? I've been paid much less than, than, a, than a cold steak slice for a gig. Uh, what would be? What would you accept minimum payment for? Right? Imagine right. it's like a really, a really nice gig, right? right okay. You can't offer you can't offer to do it for free, right, but sure. you can only do it for for an, an item of food. What Ooh, would be the right. lowest the lowest food denominator you would accept to do to do fifteen twenty minutes of this right. gig? Oh, fifteen twenty. Okay, uh, I guess it depends a little bit on the gig. You know what I mean? Like, because if it's if it's like a if it's like a corporate, I'd probably want like a crate or something, at least, yeah, yeah. Um, like a like a crate of Fanta. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not even that mad on Fanta, but it just feels like it feels fancy, doesn't it? I mean, if it was Orangina, bloody hell, that's corporate fee, isn't it? Because that's yeah. I, I, oh, I don't know. You have to spend a lot of time shaking an orange gene. That's true. Well, that's how you know it's that's how you know it's a bit posher, though, isn't it? Like you know, because uh, it's one of them foods that you have to muck around with more, um, and that's yeah, like yeah, yeah, fancy. Yeah, I'd probably yeah. I mean, what about what about an umbongo or a Kiara? I'd take a I'd take a Kiara. You know, I love yeah. a Kiara. Uh, yeah, it's good for yeah. me. Um, Do you remember they, the advert years ago for that? Yeah. I'll be your dog. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, yeah. I mean, it's it's you don't see it anymore, do you? Like, what happened with that? Uh, Poor lad. It's a shame. It's a shame. <laughs> <laughs> I like the bongos. I mean, with the Kiora, right? So with this gig, okay. So I'm being offered a bottle of Kiora. Thank you very much. But um, would would I get given the water to mix it up with, or do I just have to drink it concentrated? Oh, imagine that! Imagine having to have meat, meat Kiora. Oh my god! Shop. Yeah, yeah. Because I've I've done it before. That's why I'm the wild man, baby. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, bloody hell. I'll never forget it. I'll never forget it. He came into the gig, he broke the door down, he downed the cordial, neat, I'll add, and he just took his shirt off. He flipped the whole stage. Unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then he went, and then afterwards, he, he went straight onto the Vimp tour. Oh, man, God. man. You know, when you're, when you're on Vimp tour, it's in trouble as well, because that's the real spirit of Salford in there. Well, do you know what? It's no fun anymore now, Eddie, because they're taking all of the sugar and the crazy E numbers out of these drinks now. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, when we were growing up and we used to have these cordial drinks, we, you know, we used to be awake all night, but it was fun. Now, yeah. you, you can have a Vimto before bed and it doesn't matter, you're still going to sleep. Yeah, that's a fair. I, I often used to use it to just, you know, burn the midnight oil. Um, made huge savings on midnight oil from just downing a bit of Vimto, but not anymore. Not anymore. I'm 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 midnight oil low now. Do you reckon you can do the theme tune to one bongo on your guitar? Uh, I can't. What was um? It was the bongo, a bongo. They drink it in the Congo. The something, 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 and the lion. I can't remember either. Fucking you know. hell. I don't know. I, uh, they drank it in the. Did they drink it in the Congo? They've had a lot of. I don't think on bongo. I think that's the least of their worries. The, the terrible time they're having over there. 
Yeah, I don't think that they have the correct facilities in the Congo to cope with Umbongo. No. Uh, to be honest, <laughs> you need strong, strong refrigeration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, um, and a clean water supply. I'm not yeah. sure what the water supply is in, like in certain areas of the Congo. No. But uh, and I reckon if you if you're not having it in a closed beaker, you're going to get a lot of flies in it as well. I think that's fair. Yeah, and you know, I mean, I suppose uh, also you need the logistics routes, don't you? But I mean. I, I I suppose I know very little about the infrastructure of the Congo. To 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 tell the truth, uh, it's my secret. I don't even think it's real. It's not even a real place. I don't think. <laughs> isn't it? Isn't it just in stories? The Congo. No, no, the Congo. They've got the People's Republic of Congo now. <laughs> they've got they've got that People's Republic of Congo now. Oh, I like the People's Republic of Congo. It's <laughs> latest thing. Hey, Barbara, yeah. should, have seen, should have seen the lad in the shop the other day. We're from that People's Republic of Congo. We were. Yeah, I like Congo. <laughs> That's what they were saying. That's what they were saying. <laughs> Coming over here yeah, with these snakes. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming he had a snake there. Might just might just be a Tasmanian devil or something. I don't know. Well, I think uh, that would have been Tasmania. <laughs> oh, <laughs> this guy, this guy, is, he's breaking. He's flagrant use of customs law. That's him. <laughs> Yeah. What have you got in there, sir? It's just uh, just a crate of uh, umbongos I'm bringing in to provide to the country. And all you do is... <laughs> 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 if I'm not mistaken, I believe your umbongos pulling it, blowing a raspberry at me. Oh, <laughs> That's just a myth. They don't look like Taz off the cartoons, you know. They don't go... <laughs> sorry, sorry. What, what, are, they, no, what are they doing? They the make more of a... <laughs> Uh, yeah. it's so, uh, I watched David Atten for us with them uh, the other week and he had them on. Uh, it's nothing sacred anymore. It's nothing no. sacred. What did, no. he, what did he do with them? Uh, he watched them. He watched them uh, dig a hole. Right. Uh, then the sc- then they had a scuttle for a little bit with the okay. with the other one. They scuttled each other for a yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then and then I think they went and ate a lizard. Okay. So it's a bit of like a, an after scuttle treat. Yeah, oh, yeah. Let's yeah. go and eat this beard of dragon lizard. <laughs> yeah, it's like going to the pub in it. Yeah, like you know, you, yeah, you know, yeah, what? we've yeah. had a good bit. We've had a good bit of five aside. Let's go down the pub. Let's have a lizard. <laughs> That's what, <laughs> that's what, that's I, what. I couldn't do that with uh, if each, with me and Julie have a, have a, like a bit of a you know a bit of a scuttle. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, I've never suggested let's go to the pub because we, we we both need to thoroughly deep cleanse ourselves afterwards. Well, fair um, do you have a lizard though? Um, I don't know. I have a dog called Branco. Um, oh, that's a good name for a dog. Yeah, he's named after the uh, Middlesbrough left back, Brazilian left back Branco. Nice. Who, who's, uh, he had mighty thighs. Sure. Um, <laughs> what are your dog's thighs uh, like? Are they good? They're right. They're good. Yeah, no, they're like a bit. bit he's, he's fourteen, so he's got like oh. the thighs of a, of a granddad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, granddad Branco. <laughs> yeah, granddad. He's old man now. Bless yeah. him. Uh, he, I better check on him in a minute. He's probably dead or something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, maybe yeah, I, I don't know. I've never met him. I might not like him. Um, I don't he's know. Always lovely. Yeah, I don't think I'd wish death on a dog, even if I didn't like him. Though, to be fair, you know what? I'm the madman, but I'm not. I'm not that wild. I'm not that wild. You're the wild man. You're not the mad dog. Yeah, that's so, it. Yeah. So um, <laughs> anyway, by the way, Eddie, this this is uh, believe it or not meant to be uh, a partial football podcast. Oh yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> we, we better we better check that box because it is sponsored by Butterfan TV. Okay. Uh, <laughs> do, do you do you like football, Eddie? Uh, uh, yeah, for yes, for the purposes of this podcast. Oh boy, I can't. I'm chock full of football, mate, Ted. Can't. Is there, is if you, is there any particular team that you like? Oh, it's too hard. Oh, to, like, I like them all. Uh, like them all. Yeah. <laughs> Could you imagine that? <laughs> yeah. That's like which, tr- which, which game are you going to do? Oh, well, I'm oh. going to go and support the Arsenal because yeah. uh, I'm not going to see them. <laughs> go on, go on, did Arsenal. That's me. <laughs> Arsenal Villa. Yes, we go. <laughs> There's only one Manchester Arsenal. That's, the, that's what people say, isn't it? Yeah, that's good. Two, yeah, two Arsenal, up. up the two Arsenal. <laughs> that's us. <laughs> uh, well, 
uh, you know, it's been a lovely chat, Eddie. Yeah. Have you got? Uh, have you? Uh, we've got any gigs coming up? I know you've got one coming up on Friday because it's it's from the sponsors of the show, Showcase Comedy. Oh, uh, that's, that's in Bradford. Have you got any before that one? Before I touch on uh, it? Or? Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm I'm, I'm at Leeds tomorrow for Bolshevism Comedy. I'm uh, I'm head, headlining. Oh. Well, I don't know if I'm. Head- I mean, I am. T- I technically I'm on last, which is nice. And then on Monday, I'm also doing the last Manchester run out of my uh, of my solo show, Hurst Schmerst. Uh, that's probably going to be the last time that goes out before I start the new show. Very good, very yeah. good. And then on Friday, we've got Bradford Comedy Club. Yes. Uh, Hold on, let me uh, I'll, I'll do you. I'll do you a little, little like an exciting. Is that doing anything for you? What's your name, sir? Yeah, yeah, it was good. I don't know. It might have, it might have added value to uh, keep doing it. So Eddie Hurst is going to be opening up on Friday, twenty second, in Bradford uh, at Tapestry Art Centre, and he's on with Michael Holford, Julian Lee, and headliner James Bears, and your host them is Chris Love. Check out the tickets at Chew Cake Facebook. There we go. That was like yeah. a proper advert, jingle wasn't jingle, it? Yeah. A little jingle, a little jingle jangle, a little jingle jangle. Was good, that. A lovely yeah, lineup, lovely lineup. Very much looking forward to it. Lot of- Here we go. Good night. Yeah. Well, Eddie, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Yeah, uh, you too, if any of, any of my listeners want to uh, check Eddie Hurst out, it's spell E D Y H U. R S T. That's right. You, it? It. you stormed it, mate. Yeah. Uh, and they can, uh, they can, they can follow you on on Facebook, Twitter, yeah, and yeah. In, in, Instanan. Is it? I don't know what it's called. Instanan. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's when you Instanan. you get the nans come automatically to you. So I need an Instanan, and she comes and makes you a cup of tea in that. Oh, imagine that. There's another business that. idea. Yeah. In, <laughs> Instanan. You uh, you log on, um, and you say, oh, I wouldn't mind uh, a lovely old lady coming round to make me a cup of tea or run me a bath or yeah. took me in oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. into the nan she's round yeah. straight away but she might have to have a sit down for a bit before she leaves. Well, that's fair. That's I think that's the least yeah. you know. or, or like instant nan and it's like a nan bread. I'd like that too. Go to that. Yeah, well that could work, yeah. yeah just a hot yeah. nan. Bit of peshwari popped through my door. Oh, a hot nan, eh? That's, a, that's another escort site. <laughs> oh, that boy. one aboard no, <laughs> 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 right then, mate. I'll uh, I'll let I'll let you go. Yeah, thanks, and, uh, I'll, I'll I'll see you on Friday. Yeah, see you Friday, mate. Uh, so that was uh, that was musical wild man of comedy uh, Eddie Hurst. There, uh, like I say, you can see him on Friday. I'll just give him a follow on all the social media, isn't that you know what I mean? Cheers. <laughs> Right then, Maris, it is now time for my favourite part of the show, Ask Ted, where all my followers on social media ask me a question and I answer it as honest as I possibly can. I've not read any of them until this very moment, so I'm just loading up my social media account now and here we go. First question. Oh, Duncan Phillips, me old pal Duncan Phillips, buys me a coffee every week on coffee.com. Thanks, Duncan. <sighs> question, here we go. Who was your favourite page three girl and did Big Fat Julie ever complain about page two and three being stuck together after you had finished with the paper? Um, yeah, I'll answer the second part uh, first. Um, if you're implying that I've done some type of sexy love liquid, you're wrong. Um, if anything, they were stuck together from a rule or I might have been eating a blackjack and dribbled onto it which can be quite messy on a newspaper as well but uh, your first question my favourite page three girl um, was Melinda Messenger uh, I was a big fan of little Melinda and I always remember she did uh, a, a, a tour in a, in a big red uh, bus and it was called the big red bust to uh, see what they did there. They made a little pun on, on the word bust and I got a signed photo of her and I got to have a good a good look at um, 
at, at Melinda up close as well. It was very lovely, very lovely. Uh, next question, David Smith from all. That's how he charts you from all. Uh, is it true that was all about Big Fat Julie? It's nice so far. Is it true that Big Fat Julie attempted to kill you after the food related issue at the salad bar? Uh, yeah, it, it is true, yeah. It's obviously escaped into the media. Um, it's, uh, you know, I, I was at the salad bar uh, because I'm. I'm, I'm trying to lose a bit of weight. She wanted me to go to the carvery and just get her a plate of 64 sausages. Um, and that was just a start, as she said. Uh, and I said, no, all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna teach you a lesson here. Yeah? And I came I came back with three sausages and loads of tomatoes, lettuce, uh, all the best the best veg and, and salad, you know, um, a man can desire, uh, hoping she would like it as well and uh, she just basically threw it on the floor threw me on the floor and got me in a Boston Crab um, if you don't know what a Boston Crab is matters, um, it was the finishing move of uh, Shaw, uh, no not Shaw Michaels Brett the It Man Art in, uh, in the wrestling um, it, no it wasn't it was oh, oh no who used to do it Brett Deep and I used to do the sharpshooter. Uh, I think the Boston Crab might have been done by Sean Michaels in the Rockers. Um, and occasionally, um, I think quite no it was Mr Perfect Mr no no he, got, he, he used to get you in the, in the perfect plex I'm confused I'm confused I don't know who it was I need no oh my god Rick the Model Martel Rick the Model Martel Rick the Model Martel used to do the Boston Crab and that's what Julie did I'm sure you about that I had a bit of a rant there about old school uh, late 80s early 90s WWF uh, next question Wilf Wilf Smith if God sneezes what would you say uh, well it's a good question that Wilfie um, I'd probably say give stop sneezing you dirty bastard you God surely you can rid yourself of any colds allergies and diseases and, and just be a pure pure leader of, of earth uh, so it's a bit of an irrelevant question I want real life questions Wilf you know what I mean everyone knows God doesn't sneeze uh, next question Schmeichel Veetley oh I love that name Schmeichel um, who would win in a fight a lion or a tiger um, now are we specifying gender or is this going to get messy because um, you know I'm thinking the male lion he, he would be able to kick uh, a female tiger's head in um, I'm thinking a female tiger and a male tiger will be able to kick a lot of female lions head in um, I'm, I think a male tiger and a male lion I think the male lion would win because he would be stronger and he's got nice hair he's got good hair as well uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah Liam Woods now then Ted the only boxer to go six rounds and shit in the ring was Fido off Crufts how many rounds would you last with Tyson Fury before you had to shit in the ring I tell you now Liam Fury doesn't frighten me he might be big he might be from a travelling community and have some hard family members who probably frighten me a bit more but I reckon um, I reckon Fury would not know what, what hits him with me I'm uh, I'm I'm fast I've got I've got a good good punch on one of my hands uh, and uh, I fight dirty as well and he won't be prepared for that so he's a tall lad so I'll probably just punch him in the nuts as well um, but I think eventually he would catch up with me and 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 probably you know brutally slay me uh, with within round one uh, so let's be honest well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, David Gray David Babylon Babylon oh no it's not that one it's not that one no uh, oh he's just put Kate Garraway would oh, yeah. you uh, I have got a very, very soft spot for Kate Galloway. I always have done. I like the way she, she looks like a sexy squirrel. She's got like them little teeth that, you know, like, you know, she, she, she'd probably catch your ghoulies with them when you're having a bit of rumpy pumpy with them. And I, and I, I like that. I like that a lot. Uh, she's got good hair, good good fringe sometimes, good body for 52-year-old, I think she is. Uh, definitely 
Kit Galloway is is one of my guilty pleasures, definitely. Stephen Race, uh, what is the exact time and date acceptable to put your Christmas tree up? Um, now we're getting close to Christmas, so we might as well start answering these festive questions. Um, I, I would say that. Um, it's got to be, for me, you've got to be in December to put your Christmas tree up. You really have. If you're putting your Christmas tree up before December, you're a scruffer. I'm just saying, I'm just putting it out there, you're a scruffer. Um, so, yeah, December the 1st, any time after midnight on that day is good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Tony Seaman. Ah, oh, here we go. Ted, if you drop toast on the floor, it always lands butter side up. And if a cat falls, it always lands on its feet. So if you tied a slice of toast, buttered side up on a cat's back, when it falls, would it just keep spinning around? He's put a lot of thought into this, Tony, and I can see you using the logical terms of gravity involved with this. I think, for me, it depends on the type of butter as well. Uh, I'm a big fan of Vitalite, and I think you'd get a good spin on a Vitalite. Um, but maybe if you were using like a high-end Italian butter like Betoli, um, it might stick a bit more so you wouldn't spin as much um, but either way good luck with sellotape and or tying butter toast to a cat because I reckon it'll have your in eyes out mate uh, there you go uh, Bly Sad Wilson now Ted does uh, the Weight Watchers website use cookies? Uh, it's a good question. I think the Weight Watchers members do, though, Bri. <laughs> See, when I did that, I took your joke and I made it funnier. Um, yeah, I think uh, I think I think they do, and then you've got to um, you've got to then accept cookies, which is a is is, is a bit of a you know if you if you're logging on to a, a web page uh, and there's a, there's a very uh, there's a very good Liverpool comedian. Uh, um, who, who I know who, who does a joke about this um, called uh, called um, Mike Carter uh, a big lad looks like yeah, looks like that one out of Lost with a curly hair uh, he does a joke about that like uh, with him being a big chap and the first thing he gets when he goes on the Weight Watchers website is the question will you accept cookies in there of course he will so <laughs> I see what you did there it's uh, it's an obvious joke you might have thought of it uh, but someone else has thought of it as well and that's why I didn't take any credit for my reply there and referenced Mike in it okay Okay. Uh, Simon Rylander, uh, journalist and waistcoat wearing Simon Rylander, uh, once spilled a pint on my leg. Um, if you could have a threesome with Vic Fatioli and a celebrity, who would it be? And don't say David Attenborough. Um, well, Bryce had Wilson's joined on there saying that he'd have a bit of that if he couldn't get anyone famous. Like, you're not getting involved, Bryce. You're not with that cookies joke just then. Um, good question, Simon. We've already uh, we've already touched on Kate Gallagher. Away. she'd be a contender um, but uh, for me um, I think it would have to be um, that that weather girl um, the beauty, beautiful weather girl with uh, the long black dark hair Lu- Lucy Varasimi or Varasami I can't pronounce her name she looks, she looks a bit continental but she's lovely oh I tell you and she doesn't wear a wedding ring as well I've noticed when she's pointing out that clouds and rain and stuff I think um, I think I love her I think I, do, I think I really do love her yeah yeah uh, Leighton Poole, a question for you, Ted. Uh, and my cousin, Jordan Hill. Oh, they're having a little bit of banter, these two. He had, he had a question last week about Leighton. Now Leighton's having one back about Jordan. So let's have a look here. So when I'm getting pushed into a beck here, um, I'll bring my Arsenal shirt, because that's what we said. I said he's got to push him in the beck if he's wearing his Arsenal shirt. Uh, also, could you please say in these words, Jordan, it's time for you to get a shark. Stop being a virgin. It's been too long much love and then he's put like an arm with a fist on it like as if he's offering some type of fist in relief there um, I don't know uh, there, there you go uh, there was just a personal vendetta there from Leighton to Jordan Hill okay. uh, and we've now got our our last question and it's a good one from Richie Austin how you matter why do burgers come in boxes of four or eight yet burger buns come in sixes or twelves um, 
I think it's uh, because what you do is you'd, you'd have you'd have a you'd have a barbecue, don't you? And you you get your your pack of burgers, whether it be four or eight, and you get your pack of buns, whether it be the sixes or twelves. Uh, but sometimes you will use them leftover uh, buns to make your butties for work the next day. So they're called spare. Bun, butty buns. Um, that's that's what they're called. And uh, look it up and Google. It's true. Um, so you know they're thinking about you because. Uh, and sometimes you might you might drop a bread bun or two, and you might think I don't have enough bread buns for me burgers. What am I gonna do? Hang on, I've got me spare butty bun bun burgers buns there. So uh, yeah, confusing that one. But uh, good question. Good question. Uh, thank you everyone for your fantastic questions um, really really good good cheers mate cheers right thanks you very much for uh, everyone who has contributed to the show today me uh, me, me special guest Ed, Eddie Hurst um, great musical comedian check him out on uh, on Facebook Twitter Instagram like I said it's spelled E-D-Y-H-U-R-S-T um, put some good stuff online so it's worth having a look anyway uh, so we've got that gig with him on Friday in Bradford at Tapestry Arts Centre if there's any Yorkshire listeners uh, listening a um, couple more gigs for you uh, this Thursday, the 21st, in Stockton on Tees at the Georgian Theatre, the sponsors of this show, Showcase Comedy, have got a night on there. And they've got uh, eight new comedians all vying for the uh, cash prize and a place on a professional lineup as well. Uh, it's emceed by resident host Chris Lump. And then we've got the Who's Line Is It Anyway style improv group, the discount comedy checkout, closing the night as per usual. That's getting a big following at the moment. The past few months has been almost sold out so uh, do go check it out to five at a ticket or you can get um, you can get three for two or five for three so that's you know three tickets for the tenner or five tickets of 15 quid man on a Thursday night it's going to be good it's done by like 10 o'clock half 10 the latest so you can still get home get to bed sleep your hangover off it's worth doing um, also big thank you to Butterfan TV who also sponsored the show as per usual and to all the people who sent in questions let me know your thoughts on this matters if I was to set up like uh, a voice Voicemail. All the people who um, who do write in and leave questions at the at, at the end, and I answer them. How would you feel about just leaving a voicemail? And I played that voicemail, and then I answered them live on the air. Uh, you can just ring a number, leave your voicemail, and then I'll transfer it onto me podcast. Bit more work for me, like. But uh, if you're up for it, let us know. Just drop me page a message or something like that, or uh, right right on me page, uh, me me Facebook page, and we. We'll uh, we'll have a go at it another time, you know what I mean? It'll be all right. Uh, But uh, anyway, back to the footy this weekend. Hopefully the Borough can uh, get back on to, you know, we've not got a couple of points, a couple of draws. Can we get a win? Can we get a win? At home at the Riverside uh, to Hull City, 12 o'clock kickoff on the Sunday. Uh, so get yourselves down to the flange zone early and have a few drinks and that and support the lads. And let's get behind Woody. Let's get behind the boys. Uh, all have had a couple of injury problems. I think we can, do, you know, I've got a good feeling about this. I've got a good feeling about this game. Well, this is going to be the catalyst to kickstart the season, man. So up the borough and believe. <laughs> 